Wonderland. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard with Mushroom Wonderland. And today is Black Friday and you ain't gonna find me in the store today. I'll be walking out in the woods somewhere. So I'm here in Western Washington, about 500 feet above sea level, kind of old tree farms that have grown up into uh, this second growth kind of mature forest. And I'm out here today, November 26, 2021, and just trying to see what we got growing out here. See if we can find any good edible mushrooms or any dangerous ones that you should be aware of. So thanks for hitting the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment at the end, and uh, let's go into the woods and see what kind of mushrooms we got growing out here uh, late November. So come on. So this mushroom here is the first one we come across on our walk and uh, it's got this sort of kind of waxy texture on it. It's got this brown stipe that's uh, striated so it has these lines going down it. And they're kind of twisted striations on the stalk. And it's got this really wide gill pattern and they're pretty forked. Um, and these are pretty common and you can find these growing around conifer trees here in the Pacific Northwest in autumn and this is one of the later season mushrooms. Some people might confuse this for the yellowfoot chanterelle, but this is actually a species of Lacaria. So this is a Lacaria lacata. And uh, so there's a few different species of Lacaria growing out here and uh, Lacaria lacata. This one's more orange and brown colored. And then you have uh, Lacaria bicolor, which actually has kind of a purple rhizomorph here on the bottom of the stipe. So little roots that look purple at the base of the stem and that would be Lacaria bicolor. And then uh, there's other versions of these that look almost all purple or violet. And that would be your amethyst deceiver. So these are known as deceivers. Uh, the real purple one, really photogenic mushroom known as, uh, as the uh, Lacaria amethysto occidentalis. And uh, quite a tongue twister of a name, but a beautiful mushroom. And, uh, but this one, you could eat it if you were in a pinch. It's not poisonous, um, but they're just not really thought of as edibles. I think they must not taste that good or otherwise everybody would be after them. And they're really easy to find this time of year. So, Lacaria lacata, very common Northwest late season mushroom. Oh, cool. There's some kind of cool ones. Check these guys out. This is known as the cat's tongue. Look at that, you can see why it's called a cat's tongue because all those little bumps underneath there. It's got little teeth underneath the uh, bottom of the cap. So, Pseudohydnum gelatinosum or the cat's tongue and some people make little gummy candies out of these. So uh, here's a couple little ones growing right here. I usually don't find them in too huge as a quantities, but they're always growing on dead sticks and dead wood, and they're very translucent. You can see right through that thing. So another kind of later season mushroom, the cat's tongue. How cool is that? I'm not going to eat these today, but you can see how slippery it is. It's just, it's, uh, it's like a gummy bear, the gummy bear of the forest. Cat's Check these out. These are a cool mushroom. This is a cool find right here. What we've came across are known as candy caps. 
and this is one of the later season mushrooms and uh, the scientific name is Lactarius rubitus. So these are a beautiful uh, species of um, Lactarius mushroom and they're called Lactarius because they lactate this kind of milk out of them. All of the different Lactarius mushrooms will do this. Um, these Lactarius rubitus, uh, a couple of key indicators. The cap is gonna look kind of like an orange peel. Um, it's got this little umbo in the center oftentimes, kind of a little nipple right in the center of the cap, but not always. But definitely have this texture of an orange peel. And the margin here, the edge of the cap can be really kind of ruffly looking. The stipe is gonna be basically the same color as the cap, just a little bit darker. So in this mushroom, when you cut the stem, you'll see this kind of milky white lactation starting to come out of it. So when you dry this mushroom, it's gonna smell like the strongest molasses candy or maple syrup that you've ever smelled. People use it, make a homemade maple bars or cupcakes and use the candy caps uh, to sweeten them. And it's just like maple syrup. So Lactarius rubitus. There are some lookalikes around here, but uh, none of them are dangerous or deadly, um, probably not even toxic. So when you dry these, there is no mistaking uh, if it's a candy cap or not. If you have to use your imagination to smell this mushroom when it's dry, it is definitely not the right one. I'm gonna pull this up so you can see it. And uh, it's like a piece of wood or something. Not something you'd really think of as a mushroom. It's got sticks growing through it and stuff. Pretty nasty looking. So this ugly looking thing is actually really good for dyeing fabrics. And yes, this is a mushroom. This is known as the Dyer's Polypore or Phaleolus schwannitzii. Try to tongue twister. A lot of these names are pretty fun to try to memorize. But uh, this mushroom is way past its prime. Normally the sponge surface under here would be green earlier in the season. It's really this kind of rusty brown color, and then the bottom of it is just uh, nasty looking brown also. But when they're this mature, this is actually a really good one for dyeing fabric with, usually protein fabrics like wool or silk, chiffon will work. And uh, a lot of people are after the dyer's polypore at this stage of life from what I understand. So you let this dry out, and then you throw it in some boiling water, and then you throw your fabric in there, and you could add different mordants to it to uh, change the color a little bit by changing the alkalinity and the pH level. It is a common one here growing in the conifer forest of the PNW, always growing on a dead tree. And it can even be parasitic and uh, kill a tree. So if you see these growing on the roots of a tree, your tree just might be done for. I'm not gonna take this home today, so we're gonna leave it here to decompose in the forest, but it's definitely let its spores go and now it's just in the decomposition process, but uh, kind of an interesting one, and you'll see these growing on the side of trails a lot, so yeah, let's keep on walking. So here's a mushroom growing here in the, uh, in the forest of the PNW, a uh, pretty big one. Yeah, a lot of people wonder what these are because you can see them growing all over in the woods around here. And this one has uh, been called the most boring mushroom in the forest. It's just not a lot of uh, standout characteristics. It's got this real funnel-shaped cap. It's got these true gills that uh, pretty much stop on the stipe. Once in a while, they run a little decurrent right here. There's a little, these gills kind of come down onto the stipe, but... Uh, it's got this tapered little base and the cap is huge compared to the stem. So this mushroom is called the Russula brevipes or the uh, short-footed Russula. And so this uh, is actually a popular edible in like Russia. They pickle this mushroom. Over here in the United States, this will sometimes contract a parasitic fungi called Hypomyces lactiflorum and it will contort and totally change the morphology into this mushroom and also change the smell and the flavor to what we know as a lobster mushroom. This is the unparasitized variety. 
This one is just a regular Russell of Breva peas. And over here, we just don't find them all that exciting or desirable. Although if you were in a pinch, you could definitely eat this mushroom. Uh, but way better if it's got Hypomyces lactiflorum and it's turned bright orange and it's twisted and contorted this cap and filled all these gills in. Much better mushroom to eat. Uh, definitely an edible one, really common one you'll see growing on the trails. This one's pretty brown looking, but when they're young, they're white. And so this is a full grown mushroom. And uh, we're going to leave it here in the woods because we really don't have any desire to eat this guy. So Russell of Breva peas. There you go. So right here what we have is another type of russula, a relative of the russula breva peas. Although this one's more brown colored and these can turn kind of a purpley color towards the edge. And one way you can determine a russula from other mushrooms is that the stem will break like chalk. You see it just breaks straight across and it doesn't string off, it doesn't bend. Um, it's got a cell structure a little bit like styrofoam or something. But this... Um, there is actually over 200 different varieties of russellas here in the Northwest. And this one, um, I have actually tasted, nibbled and spit out a chunk of this and it's very, very acrid and spicy. So this one would be considered inedible, although I don't know what species this is. It is in the genus russella. And there's really only one russella that people are after around here. That's russella zarampolina, uh, the shrimp mushroom, which is more purple on top. This one's definitely brown and slimier than the uh, shrimp russula. But uh, this one we're going to leave in the forest, but it's a good way to indicate that it's in the genus russula, and you could figure out what this particular one is, although nobody's out here trying to pick them and eat them because they are super acrid and spicy. So there's another common mycorrhizal mushroom here in the PNW in the autumn. A couple mushrooms growing trail side, and... Uh, these ones kind of have this brown color, and if you look at the stipe, it's got this little gray ashy deposit on it, much like that of a matsutake, and the way that it tapers down, also like a matsutake. It's got this uh, really fibrillose stem with this analis on it from where it tore away here from the cap. So this is actually a close relative of matsutake, but this one is um, called Tricholoma focali, and it is in the same genus uh, tricholoma as Matsutake is, but this one is inedible and uh, also another common mycorrhizal mushroom here in the northwest And there's the hole that it came out of and just like Matsutake It finds this little deposit of gray ashy soil to grow in Trails like this in the woods with the moss on the sides and a conifer forest here in the Pacific Northwest is a great place to learn about mushrooms because this time of year they're just growing all over the sides of the trail and, uh, and you can just pick them up real easy without having to get wet. Here's some kind of cool mushrooms. Check these out. It looks like a coral. That's what it's called is the coral mushroom. This is a species of Ramiria. This is golden Ramiria. And there's a lot of different species of Ramiria, so I'm not sure of the exact species of this, and I would be very cautious if trying to eat them. There's all kinds of uh, little folklore out there as to the edibility of these mushrooms, but uh, I just tend to avoid the Ramiria, although they are really pretty to look at. Okay, so we found some mushrooms here growing underneath this big bush and uh, these caught my eye because they're so purple. See that purple look? Very kind of a purple uh, maroon color. And then if you look at this stipe, look at all the blushing going on. So it's really pink on the stipe right here. So if you recognize that stem, same deal, breaks straight across. So that's a russula. And this one is the one I was talking about. This is russula zarampolina. 
or the shrimp russula. And uh, some people find these to be good edibles. And they're also pretty common here in the Northwest, but you want that deep purple cap, not the brownish cap. And uh, that blushing on the stem is a good indicator of the shrimp russula, but it doesn't happen always. So the best way to do it is to break a little piece of this cap off and chew on it. And uh, I did that in my last video, so I'm not gonna do that today. I am confident it is Russula Zarampolina or the shrimp Russula. So yeah, if you wanna try that one out, maybe get a younger specimen than this. This one's been chewed up by the bugs, so. Hey, so I really hope you've enjoyed this little stroll through the woods looking at mushrooms. And there are so many more mushrooms out here to see. I don't want to bore you all in one video, but check out my other videos. I've got tons of identification videos, kind of like this. And I walk through the forest and we find what's growing at a certain times of year. And I will probably be showing ID videos well past when these mushrooms are actually growing because there are so many mushrooms out here, it's hard to make that many videos all in real time. So um, keep watching. And so next fall, you'll be prepared for what some of these mushrooms are. And uh, this is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland signing out. Thank you, love y'all.